everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today to present to you our company. We are a publicly traded company, so I refer you to the forward-looking statements and our SEC filings. This is one of three important messages I hope you uh, leave with today about AGTC, and that is, is that we're really embedded in the basic technology of the products that we're bringing forward. And to give patients the best chance at having a clinical effect, we need to play with each component of the vectors in the gene therapy products we're developing to specifically target each clinical phenotype. And then on top of that, that screening, that integration, that combination of the different tools needs to be done in non-human primates because specificity of capsids, uh, cell specificity of promoters is not maintained from the lower mammals up through primates. And we all want to improve vision in humans, not vision in dogs or mice. So this is our lead product pipeline, and, and this is the other important message I'd like you to take home today, is that we have a rich pipeline. We have four ongoing clinical trials and indications that have patient populations of 10, 20, 30,000 patients. XLRS and achromatopsia are stable diseases over time, so we feel we can treat a large percentage of the patient population. And across these four programs over the next 12 months, we're going to be rolling out data set after data set. We'll first release a six-month data on XLRS by the end of this year. Then we'll roll into both the chromatopsia trials as well as the XLRP trial. And I'll have more information about that in a minute. And then we'll also be filing an IND for our optogenetic program. So a rich pipeline of products applying this deep understanding of the technology to give benefit to patients with orphan eye indications. So XLRS is a disease that results in a loss of a structural protein, meaning the back of the eye, the layers of the eye kind of fall apart from each other and, and reduces vision. Uh, we have completed enrollment in our phase one, two study of 27 patients, and that's the six month data that we'll be releasing by the end of this year. But we further worked with our partner Biogen to add a cohort of pediatric patients at the high dose. The next indication is a chromatopsia, again, another large, larger market for orphan and that there's about 28,000 patients in the EU and US. There are different genes that cause the same clinical phenotype, so we actually have two ongoing achromatopsia trials to address about 70% of the patient population. This is a very different disease than XLRS. It is a cone-specific indication, which means we developed a proprietary cone-specific promoter to, a, to work on this product. We also had access to large animal models of this disease, a dog model at the University of Pennsylvania, and a sheep model at Hadassah Medical Center in Jerusalem, and this allowed us to develop a very rich set of data to really go into the clinic fully armed with good information. In this, these two trials, we, as of our September uh, conference call, we had dosed a, a total of uh, 10 patients across the B3 and the A3, uh, and our guidance is, is that we'll be uh, complete with dose escalation in the first quarter of 2019. For XLRP, this is a disease that's a little bit different than the first two. Unlike XLRS and achromatopsia, this disease is a degenerative disease. So at the heart of the trial, it, wanting to stabilize the progression of this disease. There, again, there's about 20,000 patients. Again, we had access to two different large animal models, dogs from the University of Pennsylvania again, and we're really able to carefully design our construct. XLRP is partnered with Biogen, and we recently have received $12.5 million of milestones on this program as we've brought it into the clinic. And as of that September co conference call, again, we dosed five patients, and our guidance is that we'll be complete with dose escalation by the first quarter of 2019. Optogenetics, completely different story. Loss of photoreceptors completely, so we're turning a light-sensitive uh, protein on in the retinal ganglion cells. And what we think really makes the difference here is our partnership with a medical device company in New York City called Bionic Sight that has a very, very innovative wearable device that helps recode the incoming light such that patients will actually be able to recognize objects versus just light and dark. 
We have recently expanded our team, in the, especially in the clinical and medical groups. We have a, a very rich set of people now in our clinical ops as we've rolled all these different programs into the clinic. People don't think too much about manufacturing and ophthalmology, but in our phase one, two trials, we made six different lots of at 25 liters. Each of those lots was over 2,000 doses worth of material, and our recent improvements would make that tens of thousands of doses per 25 liters. So that really supports these orphan uh, indications, but as we move into larger doses or larger markets, our manufacturing is well under control. And then the final third piece, important piece of information to remember about AGTC is that we have a strong balance sheet. That 105 million in June does not include those milestones from Biogen, so it's really even stronger than our, at our last report. And this funding is enough funding for us to get all of the data from those four clinical programs I talked about, plus get the fifth clinical program into the clinic and, and enrolled. So lots of information coming out from AGTC over the next year, and I really look forward to being here at the next year's OIS. Thank you.